In late 1933, Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Nazi Germany. In the next few years, his Nazi party implemented many, many nationalistic and anti-Semitic policies. Policies that kicked Jews out of civil services and made German businesses stop servicing Jews. Policies that made sure Jews and Aryans couldn't marry or have any extramarital relationship. Policies that harassed Jewish people. Fast forward to October 1938, direct orders were given to arrest Polish Jews living in Nazi Germany and to send them back to Poland. And so around 17,000 Polish Jews were sent to the Polish border where they were stuck. The Polish border guards wouldn't let them in and they couldn't go back to Germany. So now you have 17,000 people stuck without food or water or shelter at the Polish border. In the crowd of 17,000 were the parents of Herschel Grinspan, a 17-year-old Polish Jew living in Paris after escaping Germany the years prior. Upon hearing the news, Herschel became angry, so angry that he would go out and buy a revolver. On the morning of November 7, 1938, Herschel would enter the German embassy in Paris, posing as a spy. He would claim to have important documents that he could only hand to a high-ranking official. He was then immediately directed to the office of Ernst von Raff. Once in the office, Herschel pulled out his revolver and fired five shots straight into the abdomen of Ernst von Raff. Herschel was then reportedly heard shouting insults to the bleeding official while claiming he acted in the name of persecuted Jews. Ernst von Raff would pass away on the evening of November 9th. His passing greatly angered Hitler, the Nazi party and many Germans. That anger quickly translated into action that very night. Nazi SS, Nazi SA, Hitler Youth and German citizens took to the streets all over Germany. They would set fire to synagogues all over the country and vandalize Jewish homes, schools, hospitals, businesses and cemeteries. They would also attack and murder many Jews as well. German police officers and German firefighters were ordered to do nothing as the situation spiraled out of control. Firefighters would only extinguish fires that threatened Aryan-owned property. By the morning of November 10, 1938, everything had died down. The aftermath of the previous night was clear for everyone to see. More than 250 synagogues were burned down, over 7,000 Jewish businesses were trashed and looted, and even more homes were vandalized. Nearly 100 Jews were murdered as well. The streets were littered with broken glasses, giving rise to the name the Night of Broken Glass or Kristallnacht. The Nazi party placed heavy blame on the Jewish community for quote-unquote causing Kristallnacht. They would go on to arrest more than 30,000 Jewish men and send them to various Nazi concentration camps. They would also place a fine on the German Jewish community, reportedly worth 1 billion mark, or roughly 500 million USD. Kristallnacht was reported all over the world, with various reactions ranging from shock, to condemnation, to criticism, and to rage. However, few countries would actually take any meaningful action to help the German Jews. By the start of World War II, there were still more than 200,000 German Jews stuck in Germany, awaiting an uncertain future. Kristallnacht or the Night of Broken Glass was a turning point in the harassment of Jews in Nazi Germany. Before Kristallnacht, the harassment was mainly non-violent. But now going forward, it seems like the mistreatment and the harassment of German Jews and other Jewish people would only intensify. It would seem that things will only get worse as the Nazi party aimed to solve the quote-unquote Jewish question. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. See you next time.